All right, everybody, 7.5 worksheet problems. Now, this worksheet was only 12 problems long instead of 16, so I'm just going to be doing three of them with you today. Uh, all right, let's take a look at problem number one. And what we see in this diagram here is indicative of the setup here for the side splitter theorem. We have one big triangle. In fact, let me just show you real quick kind of the way this diagram was constructed is there was one big triangle here like this, and then inside the triangle they drew a another piece now that was parallel to one of the sides of that triangle. That means that this side on the left and this side down here on the bottom are the sides that were split by this parallel line that was drawn. They were split at this point right here and this point right over here. And the side splitter theorem tells us that the way that this side was split on the left is proportional to the way that this side on the right was split. So, ooh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, so let's try that again, Mr. Fontana. We're going to get rid of all of that, and let's get working on this problem right here. Okay, now what I want you to notice right here is that we have some sides here that seem to match up that should work in our proportional relationship. For example, this left side has this small little piece right here of two, and you want to ask yourself, what is the corresponding side length on the other side of this triangle. Well, that two right there lines up with this piece down on the bottom, which has a length of three. The other thing they gave you was eight. And unlike the problem that I did with you in the notes right here, the eight represents the length of the entire left-hand side. So this entire left-hand side is eight. That would have to match up with the entire bottom side here, which luckily they gave us right there as two X minus four. So the 2 goes along with the 3, and the 8 corresponds to the 2x minus 4. Let's cross multiply. We're going to multiply the 2 times, in parentheses now, the binomial 2x minus 4, and that's going to equal the product of 3 times 8. You guys are probably going to want to distribute that 2 here to get a 4x minus 8. That's going to equal 24. And from here, nothing too bad, guys. We're going to add an 8 on both sides of the equation. Those will cancel. And we're going to get 4x is equal to 32. We're going to divide by 4 there. And sure enough, we're going to get x is equal to 8. Woohoo! Go us. All right, there's number 1. 2, 3, and 4 should be similar to that. Number 5 uses the corollary to the side splitter theorem. Um, we don't really have a triangle here, but we do have 1, 2, 3 parallel lines cut by two different transversals right here. And that corollary told us that when you have two transversals cutting three or more parallel lines, they cut them off proportionally. And I like this theorem and this setup and this corollary right here because the proportion sets up just as it appears. 28 right here is the number on the top left in the diagram, so I'm going to put it on the top left in my proportion. It doesn't have to be that way, but there's no good reason not to. Um, from there, a couple different ways you can go. I like to just keep this in order. The 28 is the top left. The 6x plus 3 is the bottom left. So I'll put that right here. The top right number is 16, and the bottom right number is 12. Now, as I've said a few times before, in a problem like this, there are eight different ways that you could set up your proportion correctly. So if you tried a problem like this, and your proportion looked a little bit different from mine, that's probably okay. The important thing is that the 28 and the 12 are in opposite kitty corner positions, and likewise with the 6x plus 3 and the 16. Okay, let's cross multiply. Big numbers here. We're going to take the 16 and multiply that by the binomial 6x plus 3 in parentheses, and that's going to equal the product of 28 times 12. All right, let's distribute here. 16 times 6 is a 96x plus a 48 equals, oh boy, uh, 28, 280, and another 56, I think is 336. But you know what? I have a calculator right here. I should probably double check that before I goof it up. Hey, I was right, 336. Okay, we're going to subtract a 48 from both sides. 
and that is going to give us 96x is equal to, and that is going to be 288, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check that. Yes, it is. And last step, then, we're going to divide both sides by 96. And as luck would have it, we're going to end up with x is equal to 3. All right, and... There it is. There's our correct answer for number five. So that uses the corollary to the side splitter theorem, which applies when you've got multiple parallel lines cut by two transversals. And the last problem we're going to do together here is number nine. And this one uses the angle bisector theorem. We have one big triangle here, uh, the, the large outer one. And then one of the angles of that triangle is bisected by this little segment right over here. And that segment cuts this third side off into two pieces right here with a length of 2x plus 4 for the, the top and 28 for the bottom. And the relationship between those two pieces is equal to the relationship between the 15 and the 35 right here. So how do we want to start this? I'd probably go with a 15, which is this piece up here on the top. That would correspond here to the 2x minus 4. And that relationship would be exactly the same as the relationship from 35 down to 28. Again, there's eight different ways you could set this proportion up. You could have gone 15 over 35. You could have gone in this direction is equal to 2x minus 4 over 28. Uh, that would be another common one I would expect to see sometimes. But all of them are right. Um, Again, if you're just following a set pattern and how all that works out. All right, let's cross multiply. I like to do the variable first. So this is going to be 35 times a 2x minus 4, and that's going to equal a 28 times a 15. Let's distribute the 35 in there. That'll get us 70x minus 140 is equal to 280, and another half of that 140 is going to be 420. We are going to add 140 onto both sides now. And let's see where that gets us. Those cancel out. And we are going to get 70x is equal to, that's now a 560. And then we'll divide both sides by 70. All right, zeros cancel out. 56 divided by 7 tells us now that x is just going to equal 8. Okay, and there's our correct answer for that one there. All right, guys, 10, 11, and 12 should be about the same. So again, let's try the rest of that assignment. And if you have any questions, uh, the best place to ask them is to in, the, in the comments underneath this assignment on our classroom page.